Hello, 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 and welcome to the marvelous Monday broadcast of Miss Hope's Reading Hour. So glad to be here with you today. As you can see, look at where we are. We are back in our regular studio, okay? You see, I've changed the background. How do you like it? I hope you like it. So, today is Marvelous Monday. Hopefully, you all have had a great weekend. My weekend is pretty good. Um, so, I went to Wilmington, Delaware to sing with some of my friends, Miss Hope sings okay so um i went to sing um with my friends from church in wilmington delaware on sunday so that was pretty fun um and i got into a project that i'm doing for one of my friends because if you remember miss hope is pretty crafty okay so it's a project i'm doing for one of my friends i'll try to take some pictures and show you guys how it looks at the end okay um uh oh uh oh just a second friends some of our <laughs> background is falling a little bit stay up there okay and i dropped our chapter book well, <clears throat> such is life when it's real life, okay? So, <laughs> so I just put it up um, and hopefully it stays up the whole time. I'll fix that so that next time when you see the backdrop, it will look more together, okay? But we are here and I'm glad that you are here with me to read these great books on Miss Hope's reading hour today. Okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. So today, I was trying to figure out what books am I going to read? <clears throat> and like I've done so many other times, um, I kept looking at these two books in my book box. And I said, you know, I don't know when I'm going to read these two books and what I'm going to read them with. Then I read both of the books and I said, oh, I could read these together. So today we are going to um, read books that talk about um, being one person who can take action, who can do the right thing. Okay, so that's what we're going to talk about today on this Hope's Reading Hour. Um, I was looking in my book box, okay, and I chose some books from my school, but our book box is still hmm, a little tiny right now. So, if you would like to donate to the Miss Hope's Reading Hour library, right down here in the ticker, you can donate either via cash app or by sending digital gift cards um, to our email address or send me a note by email and say, Miss Hope, I want to send you some books and I will let you know just how you can do that, okay? So, without further ado, let us get to the books, shall we? So, our first book is literally called I Am One. A book of action. Now, we've read books by this author before. This book is by Susan Verde, art by Peter H. Reynolds, and it is a number by the number one New York Times best-selling team. So these books right here have been New York Times number one best-selling books. Guess what, friends? You do not have to wait until you are an adult, my young ones and older young ones. You can be a New York Times bestseller too. All you gotta do is write an awesome book that everybody is like, oh, this book is so awesome. I must buy it, okay? That's all you gotta do. 
All right, so I am one. Then this book, which is a reading rainbow book, you know I love those. It is called The Great Kapok Tree. A Tale of the Amazon Rainforest by Lynn Cherry. Oh, and this is a scholastic book. The Great Kapok Tree. You see up here, a reading rainbow book. Okay, so we will be reading The Great Kapok Tree. And of course, our next installment of Hello Universe. Some Friendships Are Meant to Be by Erin Etrada Kelly, which is also a scholastic book. <clears throat> and I Am One is an Abramson Young Readers book. Now, let's get into our first book. I Am One, a book of action. So this book has a dust jacket. Let's see if it looks the same underneath. No, it does not. Now, sometimes you take the dust jacket off. It looks the same underneath, but this time it does not. This is how it looks. <laughs> I am one, a book of action. How do I make a difference? It seems like a tall order for one so small. <clears throat> but beautiful things start with just one. <laughs> one seed to start a garden. One stroke to start a masterpiece. One note to start a melody. One step to start a journey. <clears throat> One brick to start breaking down walls. And I can speak one gentle word to start a conversation. All of those things are so true. <clears throat> I can use my one soft voice to start a friendship. Let that be a lesson. You don't have to be loud to start being friends with someone. Just say, hi. <laughs> <clears throat> I can perform one act of kindness to start a connection. I can share one tender hug to start caring. I can light one candle to start leading the way. <clears throat> I can make one drop in the water. To start ripples that become swells then wave.
traveling over oceans, across borders and boundaries. Landing on distant shores to start a chain reaction, inspire a movement, make a change. <coughs> I am one, and I can take action. We are each one, and we can take action. <clears throat> one by one, we can make a difference. Because one is all it takes to start something beautiful. The end. Now there is an author's note. It's kind of long, but you can read that. I am one, a book of action. I like this book. Not a whole lot of words, but a whole lot of meaning. I like where it says in the beginning, how can one so small make a difference. You know, sometimes it's the small things that can make a difference. Someone may be really upset at the beginning of the day. When you go to school, you might see someone in your class and they might be upset. Something as simple as saying, good morning, or are you okay? Or do you wanna sit with me at breakfast or at lunch? Something as simple as that can make a difference in someone's day. Just a second. It's the only thing. Something that simple could make a difference in someone's day. You never know what one small thing might do. Maybe you have um, some candy or a snack and of course being safe because um, we're all trying to be safe in school you have a piece of candy would you like one or maybe you can go up to your teacher and say I'm so happy you're my teacher stuff like that makes a huge difference or if you go home and you see that your mom or your dad or your brother or your sister may not have had the greatest of days, simply going up and giving them a hug, that can make a huge difference in someone's day. It can be the difference between them having a good day the next day and their good day starting the exact moment that you give them a hug or a kiss or say, I'm so happy that I'm home. I'm so happy that I get to be with you. Just one small act of kindness can make a huge difference in the world. Being kind to the environment. Instead of throwing that potato chip bag or your candy wrapper on the ground, saying, hmm, I think I'll hold on to this till I get to the trash can. Or I think I'll try to recycle this container. Something that simple can make a huge difference because all of us are one. And if we all work every day as our one self to make a difference, imagine how all of those differences add up to make 
this big, beautiful world. So glad I got to read that book with you and I figured out when to read it, okay? Especially on a marvelous Monday. Now you'll be thinking all week long, how can I as one person make a huge difference, okay? All right, now to our next book, The Great Kapok Tree by Lynn Cherry. So this is before the book even starts. In the Amazon forest, it is always hot. And in that heat, everything grows and grows and grows. The tops of the trees in the rainforest are called the canopy. The canopy is a sunny place that touches the sky. The animals that live there like lots of white. Colorful parrots fly from tree to tree. Monkeys leap from branch to branch. The bottom of the rainforest is called the understory. The animals that live in the understory like darkness. There, silent snakes curl around hanging vines. Graceful jaguars watch and wait. And in this steamy environment, the great kapok tree shoots up through the forest and emerges above the canopy. This is the story of a community of animals that live in each, live in one such tree in the rainforest. <clears throat> Two men walked into the rainforest. Moments before, the forest had been alive with the sounds of squawking birds and howling monkeys. Now all was quiet as the creatures watched the two men and wondered why they had come. The larger man stopped and pointed to a kapok tree. Then he left. That looks like a huge tree. Look how small that man is next to the tree. The tree is huge. The smaller man took the ax he carried and struck the trunk of the tree. Whack, whack, whack. The sounds of the blows rang through the rainforest. The wood of the tree was very hard. Chop, chop, chop. The man wiped off the sweat that ran down his face and neck. Whack, chop, whack, chop. Soon the man grew tired. He sat down to rest at the foot of the great kapok tree. To rest at the foot, oh, I'm sorry, he sat down to rest at the foot of the great kapok tree. Before he knew it, the heat and the hum of the forest had lulled him to sleep. A boa constrictor lived in the kapok tree. He slithered down its trunk to where the man was sleeping. He looked at the gash the axe had made in the tree. Then the huge snake slid very close to the man and hissed in his ear, Senor, this tree is a tree of miracles. It is my home where generations of my ancestors have lived. Do not chop it down. A bee buzzed in the sleeping man's ear. Senor, my hive is in this kapok tree, and I fly from tree to tree and flower to flower collecting pollen. In this way, I pollinate the trees and flowers throughout the rainforest. You see, all living things depend on one another. Look at all those beautiful butterflies.
A troop of monkeys scampered from the canopy of the K-pop tree. They chattered to the man, to the sleeping man, Senhor. We have seen the ways of man. You chop down one tree, then come back for another and another. The roots of these great trees will wither and die, and there will be nothing left to hold the earth in place. When, excuse me, when the rains come. The soil will be washed away, and the forest will become a desert. A toucan, a macaw, and a cock of the rock flew down from the canopy. Send whore, squawked the toucan. You must not cut down this tree. We have flown over the rainforest and see what happens once you begin to chop down the trees. Many people settle on the land. They set fires to clear the underbrush and soon the forest disappears. Where once there was life and beauty, only black and smoldering ruins remain. Look how beautiful the land is. It's a shame to see it just black and smoldering. A bright and small tree frog crawled along the edge of a leaf. In a squeaky voice, he piped in the man's ear. Senhor, a ruined rainforest means ruined lives. Many, many ruined lives. You will leave many of us homeless if you chop down this great K-pop tree. A jaguar had been sleeping along the branch in the middle of the tree. Because his spotted coat blended into the dappled light, and shadows of the understory, no one had noticed him. Now he leapt down and padded silently over to the sleeping man. He growled in his ear, Senhor, the kapok tree is home to many birds and animals. If you cut it down, where will I find my dinner? The man is blessed that he didn't become the jaguar's dinner. <laughs> Four porcupines swung down from branch to branch and whispered to the man, Senor, do you know what we animals and humans need in order to live? Oxygen. And Senor, do you know what trees produce? Oxygen. If you cut down the forest, you will destroy that which gives us all life. Did you know that much of the Earth's oxygen actually comes from the Amazon rainforest? Interesting to know. Several anteaters climbed down the kapok tree with their young clinging to their backs. The unstriped anteater said to the sleeping man, Senhor, you are chopping down this tree with no thought for the future. And surely you know that what happens tomorrow depends on what you do today. The big man tells you to chop down the beautiful tree. He does not think of his own children, who tomorrow must live in a world without trees. And that would be the worst. I like living in the city, but I like having trees too. 
A three-toed sloth began climbing down from the canopy when the men when, when the men first appeared. Only now did she reach the ground. Plodding ever so slowly to the sleeping man, she spoke in her deep and lazy voice. Simhor, how much beauty, how much is beauty worth? Can you live without it? If you destroy the beauty of the rainforest, on what would you feast your eyes? So many beautiful things to see. A child from the Yano Mamo the Yanomamo tribe, who lived in the rainforest, knelt over the sleeping man. He murmured in his ear, Senhor, when you awake, please look upon us with new eyes. The man awoke with a start. Before him stood the rainforest child, and all around him, staring, were the creatures who depended upon the great Kapok tree. What wondrous and rare animals they were. The man looked about and saw the sun streaming through the canopy. Spots of bright light glowed like jewels amidst the dark green forest. Strange and beautiful plants seemed to dangle from the air, suspended from the great kapok tree. The man smelled the fragrant perfume of their flowers. He felt the steamy mist rising from the forest floor. But he heard no sound, for the creatures were strangely quiet. I guess they were watching and waiting to see what the man would do. The man stood and picked up his axe. He swung back his arm as though to strike the tree. Suddenly he stopped. He turned and looked at the animals and the child. He hesitated then dropped the axe and walked out of the rainforest. The end. That seemed like an abrupt ending to me when I first read it. But after reading our first book, I Am One, it makes sense. The animals came as he was sleeping to let them know, let him know what his one act would do to so many animals and people. And the man had a choice to make once he woke up and saw the beauty of the rainforest and the animals and the beautiful child from the Yanamamo tribe. He had to make a choice. Do I keep cutting down these beautiful trees in this beautiful rainforest that will affect how the trees grow, how beautiful the forest is, and the lives of all of these people and animals? Do I still chop down the trees to make money or do I care about the rainforest and the people and the animals and decide not to? Every time 
You are one person and you have a choice to make a difference. There is that choice. You can choose, you know, when I see something that's bothering someone else, I could ignore it and just not respond or say anything, or I could let them know that I'm there for them and that I care. When I see that there's litter on the ground, maybe I could just leave it there. Or if I have the opportunity, I could pick it up and throw it in the trash. If I see in my house that a lot of lights are on, I could say, oh, well, that's not my room. I'm not going to turn the lights off. Or I could go and turn off the lights that aren't being used. There's always that moment, all the time, no matter how big, how small, if you're a young one or an older, older one like me, there's always a moment where you can make a difference. And if you can, you should try. So I think that is the story of the great K-pop tree. He could have cut down the tree and just disregarded what all of the animals and the child said, but he made a choice to make a difference. Sometimes your way of making a difference is not to do something. Sometimes you need to do something to make a difference or to make something right. And sometimes you need to not do something that would hurt someone or hurt the environment around you. So let that be a lesson to you young ones. There are many ways during the day that you can make a difference by what you do or what you don't do, okay? So glad I got to read these two books and I found books to read with them. So glad I got to read them with you today. All right, my friends, you know, when we get to the chapter book, we gotta change the ambiance. This will be easier once I find my adapter for my microphone, okay? But I'm just letting you know. I have to find it. If I don't find it, I'm just going to have to get another one. So, hello universe. Where did we end at? So we are in chapter two, I believe. Yes, called Valencia. And we'll see why it's called Valencia. So, so far we found out that Virgil is actually a girl. Now, me growing up, I always heard Virgil as a boy's name. But Virgil's actually a girl. And she is deaf. And, I mean, she's kind of not happy. Sees herself as a failure. Things aren't too great. Thinks her mom is super overprotective just because she's deaf. But, remember, the name of the book is Hello Universe. Some friendships are meant to be. So things could be changing very soon. We will see what happens. Let's continue with chapter two of Hello Universe. Some friendships are meant to be. Okay. I most definitely don't want mom to know about the nightmare. She'd start asking me about it every morning and every night and insist that I see a psychiatrist or something. Then again, maybe that wouldn't be so bad. Maybe I'd get some sleep. I close my eyes, think of something nice. The coming summer, yes, that's what I'll think about. Sixth grade is over and the nice, lazy summer stretches ahead. Okay, so maybe I don't have a gazillion friends to hang out with. So what? I'll make my own fun. I'll explore the woods and take notes from my zoological diary. Maybe draw some bird sketches. There's plenty to do. I don't need a gazillion friends. I don't even need one. 
All I need is me, right? Solo. It's the best way to go. It's a lot less trouble. Chapter 3. Help of a Different Nature Gulliver was a good friend, guinea pig or not. Virgil could tell him anything and he wouldn't judge. And that's what Virgil needed. Only he also needed real practical guidance. He needed help of a different nature. Lola had once told Virgil a story about a woman named Diapan who had been hungry for seven years because she didn't know how to grow food. One day, Diapan wept because all she wanted was one grain of rice and one pea pod, anything to put in her belly. She took a bath in a spring to wash away her tears, and the great spirit appeared to her with armfuls of sugar cane and rice. The great spirit gave it all to Diapan and told her exactly what she needed to do to grow more. Diapan was never hungry again. Virgil wished that he had a great spirit. Virgil? I'm confused. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm confused. I'm confused. It says that Virgil is a girl. Wait a minute. I'm confused. I'm, okay, we're gonna figure this out. This is confusing. So is Virgil a boy or a girl? Okay, this is a new, this is a new twist. Okay, let's keep reading. Virgil wished he had a great spirit that could tell him exactly what to do. But he only had Kaori Tanaka. Virgil fed Gulliver and texted Kaori as he walked down the hall for breakfast. Under normal circumstances, he would text someone at 7.45 in the morning, especially not on the first day of summer. Oh wait, he wouldn't text someone at 7.45 in the morning, especially not on the first day of summer. But nothing about Kaori was normal. Besides, she always seemed to be awake. Oh, Kaori is the one who's deaf. Okay, so Virgil is a guy. This is confusing, okay. Need appointment this afternoon if that's okay. Virgil slipped his phone into his pocket, into the pocket of his pajamas, and followed the unmistakable sounds of his parents and brothers, who were early risers because they seemed to have an endless stream of soccer practices. In the kitchen, Mom, Dad, and the Jays were drinking orange juice and letting their personalities bubble over, while Virgil tried to maneuver through all the excitement so he could get a piece of fruit or boil an egg. Morning, Virgilio, said Joselito. Good morning, Turtle, said his parents, almost in unison. Then Julius, my young batang, little brother. Virgil grumbled something like hello. His parents and brothers were sitting in the high back chairs at the counter. Lola was at the breakfast table reading a newspaper. Your mother brought too many clementines. So many, so, so eat as many as you can, said Lola without looking up. Then she, clicked, she clucked her tongue at all the wastefulness. Virgil grabbed two clementines in each hand and tried hard not to drop them as he sat next to her. His phone buzzed in his pocket. What are you reading about, Lola? Virgil asked. He arranged the clementines in a perfect line in front of him, then checked his phone. I'm available. Be here at noon sharp. Virgil laid the phone face down on the table next to the clementines. Death and destruction across the universe, said Lola, from all the leftover parts. The only sign that something went wrong with Joselito and Julius were their 
pinky fingers, which turned slightly inward. Virgil studied his own hands as they worked away the peel on, on a clementine. His fingers were long and slender. None of them turned inward. Lola, do you know anything about hands? He asked. He glanced at Joselito and Julius, but they were busy talking about soccer. Their father had recently joined a grown-up soccer league. Everyone was wild about soccer, except Virgil. Lola set down the, her newspaper. I know that they have finger, five fingers each, most of the time. What do you mean, most of the time? I once knew a girl in my village who was born with an extra thumb. Really? What did they do with it? Did she go to the doctor and get it chopped off? No, her fam family was poor. They couldn't afford a doctor. What did they do then? Kept the extra thumb, what else? Did she feel like a freak? Maybe, but I told her God must have known something she didn't, and that's why he did it. Maybe he wanted her to be an excellent hitchhiker, Virgil said. Maybe, or maybe she was like Ruby San Salvador. Who is Ruby San Salvador? Another girl from my village. She had seven sisters. Each time one of them was born, her parents had their fortunes read. But when they got to Ruby San Salvador, no one was able to see her future. Anytime someone tried, they just got a blank picture. No one knew what it meant. She walked around all the time saying, what is my destiny? What is my destiny? Finally, I said, no one knows, but you're driving us all crazy. Virgil thought of poor Ruby San Salvador, watching all her sisters get something that she couldn't have. What happened to her? Virgil asked. She left to go figure it out. The, vig the village got much quieter without all the questions. Lola narrowed her eyes at him. What's this about, Virgilio? Of all the questions in the world you could ask, why are you asking about hands? I just noticed that all of my fingers are nice and straight, don't you think? He set the clementine peels aside and put his hands on the table to show her. Lola nodded. Yes, you have beautiful hands. You have the hands of a gifted pianist. We should put you in piano lessons. Lee, she called to Virgil's mother. Lee? Yes, Manang, said Virgil's mother, who was in the middle of laughing. She was always in the middle of laughing. How come we never put Virgilio in piano lessons, huh? He has the hands of a pianist. But Virgil's father answered instead, because boys need to play sports, not fool around on a silly piano, right, turtle? Virgil shoved half a clementine in his mouth. Mr. Salinas lifted his glass of orange juice. He just needs to put meat on his bones. Lola fixed her eyes on Virgil's hands and shook her head. Ay, sus, she mumbled. You should play the piano, Anak. You could play in Madison Square Garden with fingers like that. I have no doubt. Maybe I'll take lessons, Virgil said, his voice garbled by fruit. Yes, yes, good idea, good idea, said Lola. She shifted her eyes to his face and studied it. You feeling better today, Anak? Virgil swallowed the clementine and nodded. Hmm, said Lola. How is that little pet of yours? He's okay. But last night, I read online that guinea pigs aren't supposed to live alone because they're very social animals. So? So? Gulliver's alone. Is that what's bothering you? Gulliver had nothing to do with his grand failure. 
and normally Virgil wouldn't tell a lie. But this was a situation where saying yes would kill two birds with one stone or feed two birds with one seed, as Kaori liked to say. He might get another guinea pig, and Lola would stop asking him about his sorrowful face. So, he said, yes? Lola nodded. She didn't understand why anyone would want a pet guinea pig, but everyone knew what it was like to be lonely. We'll end there, my friends. So, Kaori is the one who's deaf, and Virgil is the guy. Okay, so in this book, Hello Universe, the, the chapters are told from different people's perspective. That's why it was a little confusing. Well, so we have learned that Virgil has a friend named Kaori who is deaf and feeling lonely, and he has a guinea pig, Gulliver, who's also feeling lonely. And Virgil is feeling lonely because he feels like he doesn't really relate to anyone in his family. Let's see how all of this is going to come together and create friendships that are meant to be. Well, my friends, we are at the end. Can you believe it? We are at the end of Miss Hope's reading hour for today. So glad I got to read these awesome books with you. Remember that though you are one, though you may be a young one and small or an older young one and big, you can make a difference in someone's life today in a very small way in the things that you do and sometimes the things that you don't do. So, go out today, try to make a difference in someone's life. It'll make a difference in yours. When you make a difference in someone's life, it brings you joy. Can't help it. It's a byproduct of making a difference. So, have a great marvelous Monday. Hopefully it is greatly marvelous for you. Have a terrific Tuesday. And I'll see you right back here on a wonderful Wednesday on Miss Hope's Reading Hour. Until then, my friends, I will see you next time. Bye for now.